What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel X-Man & Co. Today we're going to do some game chops. Rooibok chops aka Impala leg chops. We're going to do brining versus marinade. Which one's better? Stay tuned, stay around, we're going to find out. So there's a few things to discuss. What is brining? Brining is basically a salt water solution that you put your meat in anywhere between 4 hours, 12 hours, even to 24 hours. And that brining solution, when do you use it? You want to use brining on lean meats, lean cuts, pork, chicken, game. Those are the type of meats that do not have intermuscular fat or lots of marbling for that matter. Those are the ones that you want to use the brining on. The reason for that is the brining forces the protein to allow the cells to retain more moisture. And while doing so, it actually makes sure that your piece of meat has got more moisture and does not turn out to be so dry at the end. Few things to also note while working with game. Seeing that game meat does not have much fat, it's easy to overcook it and end up with a piece that's so dry and really unsatisfying. So what you want to do, very important tip for today, when you do cook your game piece of meat, you want to make sure that you stop, let's say for example, at just before medium, if you do enjoy a medium piece of meat. We're going to do two different methods. It's the brining and then it's the marinade. Now there's a few other ways that you could work and deal with game. Basically, you could also put it in plain yogurt. Alternatively, you could use some buttermilk. One thing though to remember is that for the guys that don't like the gamey taste, that's what you do. Because doing that, using the buttermilk or even the yogurt will definitely pull out a lot of the gamey taste. Therefore, this is a method if you really, really don't like the gamey taste. Marinate, you're gonna use to really infuse this meat with a certain texture and a certain flavor that you really enjoy. On the other hand, you have the brining. As I explained, the brining's gonna help you make sure that your piece of meat stays moist. Let's try these two out. Let me introduce you to all our ingredients. What we have here today is a cup of red wine. House wine is perfect. We've got a red onion. We've got some garlic here, a lemon. We've got some coriander, brown sugar, quarter cup of salt, hoisin sauce over here, some soy sauce, sweetness over here, a little bit of honey. Then we have some balsamic vinegar and we've got a cup of olive oil. You could use any oil, we prefer olive oil. As usual, all the ingredients in the description below. Impala is not a very big buck, if you want to call it that, and therefore your choppies will be quite smaller than usual. It is very important to realize that you need to pat down your meat and make sure that it's dry and no moisture on the outside. You can see the Impala, also known as Rooibok locally. It's a darker meat. Once it's patted down, we're going to now split these guys and we're going to make a brine on the one side and marinate on the other. We're going to let it marinate or brine for about 24 hours and we'll be back tomorrow where we put it on the grill. Also another thing to just note is that uh, we're going to try and make sure that all the meat are treated exactly the same as far as heat goes to really try and see which one do we prefer. Certain things to remember while brining. Brining is a very basic solution, salt and water. Normally you need about a cup of salt to one gallon of water which is about three 0.78 liters for the local guys. What's important to remember is that if you're just going to use salt and sugar, that's your basic brining, you can use cold water. If you want to infuse your meat like what we're going to do today and add some herbs, then you need to heat it up and bring it back to room temperature before you add your meat. Your brining is going to happen inside the fridge, the same with the marinade. Once you have whisked the solution and you are sure that your ingredients have dissolved, your sugar and your salt, then it's time to add your cold water. Our mixture today consists of about one and a half liter of water. Our cold water that you're adding now, you don't need to heat up your amount of water that you have. You can heat up half of it like what we've done. We've actually put it in the kettle, brought it up to boiling point. This will help your salt and sugar and all of that to dissolve in your mixture. Then once it's room temperature, you can add your meat. Never add your meat while it's warm. This will just be a complete disaster and it will start to cook your meat. It will definitely have the adverse effect of what you're looking for. In the meantime, let's carry on with our marinade. What you're going to use is a whole onion. We like to use the red onion, you can use a white onion. 
Just want to cut it finely. We're going to use two cloves of garlic in our marinade. Curry is helping us here today. So first of all, we're going to add our red wine. The red wine and the olive oil is going to be our base to this marinade. It will be a cup of each. The oils bring a little bit of fattiness to your lean cut of meat. Then your coriander. Oh, that aroma is just fabulous. Then a tot of each, our western sauce. Some thick soy sauce. Balsamic vinegar. Our sweetness. A little bit of honey. Our garlic. Our onion. Squeeze some lemon juice in there. You can decide if you want to use a full lemon or half a lemon. We're going to go with a full lemon. The acidity will work perfectly with this dish. When all the ingredients are in there, you just want to mix it slightly. Just make sure it's nicely distributed and it becomes one beautiful marinade. So we're going to add two small chops to the marinade and one beautiful big leg chop. This is going to be our marinated chops. Take all the air out. The meat's completely covered in the marinade and therefore it wouldn't be necessary to turn this every hour or two hours depending how long you're going to marinate it for. This is going to go into the refrigerator now. So our brining solution is now nice and cold, room temperature. So let's put it in the bowl. Now it's time for our meat to go into the solution. Note that I've kept a little space there so it doesn't overflow. There we go. We're going to cover it and then both of these solutions, the brine and our marinades going straight to the fridge. It's been 24 hours since we've marinated and brined these beautiful pieces of meat. Now I need to just tell you guys before we carry on, this cook's been inspired by Lacquer Rooibok Yach. It's a Facebook group, go check them out. Guys, I hope you enjoy it and for the rest of you watching, this is for you as well. First of all, what we have here is our marinated meat. Let's see what it looks like. It smells divine. Look at that. You can really see it looks like it's really soft, tender. It looks like it. We're going to see once we put it on the fire. So these are our three pieces. Let's move over to the next one, which is our brining solution. It almost smells like biltong, believe it or not. This is our meat that's been brined. Looks a little bit more pale than our other pieces. Other pieces have darkened quite a bit. As you guys can see over here, we've got the marinated meat and the brined meat. Also note, I'm using two different tongs and I'm gonna keep it like that throughout this whole cook. Just to make sure there's no cross contamination. We're trying to stay as true to this whole exercise as we can. Also gonna try and make sure the heat is exactly the same and we're going to bring both pieces of meat to the same temperature. With that said, let's start our fire. At this stage, we're gonna do about two minutes aside. As you guys can see, there's a big a color difference between the two methods that we've been using. The marinade, the meat's much darker and with the brining, it's a bit pale. Very excited to see what we're gonna end up with here today. Okay, it's been another two minutes. We're gonna turn it around for a minute aside. Sometimes the meat wants to curl up and um, what we do, we just cut the edges slightly just to stop that from happening. Right guys, here we are. We've taken both pieces of meat off the fire. We had our marinade on the one side with the one set of tongs and on the other side we had our brining solution meat and I have to say just from the get-go looking at it you can see that the marinade is really appealing it's darker it looks more like meat what we used to on the right hand here with the brining it's a bit pale but I'm sure the taste test as you know is going to tell us what's going on here right without further ado let's cut a piece of each and taste it Right, let's take a piece of our brining solution meat. Right, I'm going to take a piece over there. Then let's cut over there. There you go. 
Take that piece. Right guys, for this test here, I'm gonna use the same tongs for both. I don't think at this stage it's gonna matter. And also the same knife. Right, let's cut some pieces into the brining solution. You can see it's nice and medium, just the way we like our meat. Right, then let's also cut into our marinated piece. I'm gonna remove that part, the bone. And I can tell you one thing, it is very tender, both of them, just from the cutting perspective. Also a very nice medium. Not sure if the camera is gonna show that to us, but from where we're looking, it's nice and pink. It's that moment of truth that we've all been waiting for. They both done the same way, just different methods of prepping. Otherwise the fire, they pretty much as close as you will get. I think we're gonna start with the brining. Right, there we go. Cheers boys and girls. Brining time. Hmm. Wow. That's quite amazing. You know what? This is really, really nice. I cannot actually believe without any more spices, this is what we get. It's very bultongy, so you get the gamey, bultongy taste. I really like this. Let's try the other one. All right, there you go. You guys see? Marinated. Time, let's go. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> mm. I have to be honest, this is a tough call. This is really a tough call. I do like the marinated side. I also like the brining side. From the marinated side, it's got more body. And I think that's because of the red wine, maybe. It's really full bodied. On the other side, if you like Biltong, the, the more earthly tones, then the brining is definitely for you. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Guys, you know the story. If you like what you're doing, like, share, subscribe. Enable those notifications so you get notified as soon as we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. We cannot do this without you. We'll see you on the next one. Mm, time for some chat.